Okay, what I'm going to do today is demonstrate how to use uh, Visual Studio and use the image list, a timer and a picture box uh, within a project. Uh, we're going to do that by creating a simple Windows based application which is going to flip through a number of images based upon a timer. Okay, so to get started, the first thing you need to do is get started with a brand new project. Uh, as I said, we're going to be using a Windows Forms app, so you need to make sure you select Windows Forms up the top. And then down here, because we're going to flip through a number of images, uh, we're going to call it, um, uh, guess who, images. Okay, so guess who was a game from the 80s where you had to uh, try to guess um, a face that was shown to you or was shown to the opposition. Okay, so we've got our form. What we're going to need now is to put a picture box onto that form. Uh, so if you scroll down in our toolbox on the left here and then find a picture box and then you can simply drag and drop that picture box onto the form. Now the images, one of the limitations of an image list is that the maximum size of the images is 256 by 256. So you'll see at the moment when we put our picture box in, there's no picture in it obviously. Uh, but we're going to first of all come down and find the size and we're going to change that so that it is 256 by 256. Uh, you can open that up and actually adjust the width and the height individually. Uh, it's just as easy to do 256 comma 256 there. Okay, you can see there's our picture box where we're going to put our images. Now you can load an image directly into that as well. So you can see here one of the properties of our picture box is the image. And you'll see over here you've got a little browse button that you can browse for. You can load those in from an existing resource file or import them from somewhere else. But we're going to load them from our image list later on. So let's cancel out of that because we don't want a starting picture. Then we're going to rename our picture box something that makes a little bit more sense. So uh, let's just call that uh, PBX for picture box and we're going to call it guess who. Okay so we've now got a picture box. Oh and that's not PBX at all is it? PXX, PBX guess who. Okay, so we've got our picture box called guess who. There it is. Now what we need to do is put a couple of other objects onto this form. Now these objects are actually not visible on the form. So if we have a look in our toolbox over here, we're going to search first of all for our timer. So just search for time and you'll see here's our object called timer. When you drag that onto the form, you'll see it gives you the option of adding it but when you let it go, it actually puts it down the bottom here. Um, a timer has properties of an interval, so you can see 100, and that's talking about how many milliseconds you want it to wait before the timer goes off. And so it's currently going to go off 10 times a second because it's 10, uh, 100 or it's set to 100. And you can also see it's got an enabled property. Now at the moment that's disabled okay it's not working so we're going to have to change our property there to true and the other thing we're going to do is slow it down a little bit so that our image changes once approximately every third of a second rather than every tenth of a second because that would just be too fast okay so we've got our timer here on the um, form and we're going to give it a more sensible as name as well so let's call it TMR uh, change image so that we're actually giving some information about what this timer does. And you'll see when we click off it, our timer is now called change image. The next object we want on our form is our image list. So if you start searching for image in our toolbox, you'll see that you can get the image list. Once again, you can drag and drop that onto the form and it appears below the form because it's not a visible object. It's um, a list of images that are somewhere else or that are stored separately they're not visible on the form so let's change our name there we might just leave that called image list guess who faces so there we've got our name for our list of images the other thing we want to do is change the color depth you will will remember from digital media hopefully that 8-bit means you've got about 256 colors in your image 
we're going to change that to 24 bit which is going to give us a much better quality image and you'll see here in our image size you can also change the size of the images being stored so we're going to change that to 256 oh, I've got numlock on 256 by 256 which is going to give us a width and a height of 256 for our images so we've changed in this one the name the color depth and the size and now we've got our list of or our image list holder now we're going to put our images into that image list so you can see here one of the properties is a collection uh, last lesson we learned about arrays where you can store multiple data. a collection is very similar to an array uh, you can store a whole lot of items within that let's just show you what I did there uh, within this one object so all I'm doing here is going to the browse button and you'll see that within here you can now edit the collection of images that are stored and if I push add I can browse and go and find some images now I've got these stored on my desktop if you go to uh, the Google Classroom I've put these files in a folder for you that you can download and that way you'll be able to grab these images as well okay so these are the images from a game as I said and I'm going to select all of them but I'm going to unselect ah, let's do that again select all of them except for the guess who game the shot of the box and then if we say open you'll see that it loads all of those images into our image list and you'll see that they've each got an index they've each got a number that represents that image so the first one Alex JPEG is called image zero uh, and if you click on them over here you can see it's telling you the details about each of those images but the important thing to remember is that each one has a number representing that image then we'll say OK and we're now all set to start our programming now we want our images to change when our timer goes off every time our timer goes off and so what we're going to do is come back to our form and we're going to double click on the timer and that's going to take us to our coding window but you'll see we're inside the function where the timer change image tick event happens and inside here we're going to uh, now change the image that's in our image box so the first thing we're going to do is say pbx guess who which is our picture box once again dot image and there's our image property and we're going to set that equal to something from our image list so start typing image list guess who faces so there's our list of images and I should put a dot after that instead of a um, space and then we're going to look at the collection of images and because it's an array we can use square brackets and if we say in here image 0 then that's going to now take the image which is stored at position 0 and make it the image on our guess who um, picture box so this isn't going to do anything other than put one image in and what we're going to do after we test this is come back and actually make a loop so that every time it loops through it's going to put um, the next image into our image into our picture box so let's just test it works first of all we'll press start and it should just open up the timer should tick and Alex loads into our picture box okay just like that now we want to set up a pointer that's going to point at the current image so I'm going to declare a variable and we want it to be stored outside of that private um, function so let's just declare it here just on the line above and it's going to be called integer image num which is our current integer or our current image and we're going to start it set at zero then inside our function what we're going to do is we're going to set this instead of zero we're going to say use the image which is represented by our image number on the next line what we're going to do is we're going to increment that now this is going to cause us to have an error so you'll remember that the shortcut for increment is simply to just go plus plus the problem is going to happen when we get to the very last image in our 
image list, it's still going to increment and jump to the next one. So this should work once through, and then once it's got to the end, it's going to crash. Okay, so let's test that that works first of all. And what we'll have to do here is actually create an if statement saying that if we've reached the last element in our image list, jump back to the start so it loops through our images. So let's press play and we'll just test how our timer tick works. And you can see it's going through our image list. And once it reaches the last image, it crashes because there's no more images there. So let's press stop and go back. And now we're going to put an if statement. So once again, we're inside the timer tick event. And so inside here, we're simply going to say if the integer image num is currently equal to, remember a double equal means that it's currently equal to, Oh, and I should have actually taken the shortcut here. I'm going to go back and remind you of the shortcut. So if you write if and just press tab a couple of times, let's try that again. There we go. Then it sets up the if statement for you. So after, just write if, press tab, and it'll set up the brackets in the right structure for you. So then we're going to say if the image number is equal to the image list guess who faces dot images dot and then there's a beautiful property called count which is a count of the number of images in our image list then what we want it to do is set the integer image num back equal to zero now hopefully you've picked up my error here then we're going to add an i and else so let's go else and we want an open and close brackets there else uh, increment the integer oh my goodness too many brackets there okay so this is our final structure so we've said if the integer which represents the current image so integer image number is equal to the number of or the count of images inside of our image list then we jump back to zero, so it starts again. Otherwise, it's going to increment that value by one. Okay, so integer image number plus plus means increment by one, add one to it. Now our problem is that the number of images in our image list uh, is actually one more than the index. Okay, you'll remember back here, if we jump back here to our image list, and I double click and have a look at our collection. Where's our image list? Our images collection. It starts at zero. And so because Alex is called zero, and where's the end here? Tom is called 23, there's actually 24 images in our image list rather than 23 because you've got the 23 integers here plus the zero integer, which is 24 images. So what we've actually got to do in our code here is say that we're going to say it's the the biggest number we ever want this to get to is the count of images minus one. And so that's then going to mean that we've only got that number ever going up to 23, even though there's 24 images in our array. So now let's test it and see how I've gone with the coding. Hopefully there's no syntax errors. Uh, you can see it's looping through those images there and my images are slightly bigger than 256 by 256 and when it gets to the very end there goes Tom it jumped back to A and so we've got our little image looper loading through now what you could do with this so some of the ideas from your assessment task are a dice and so you could use this to actually make it look like a dice is rolling by displaying six different images for a dice. Uh, you've also got a project where you want to do a hangman. So you could have the different hung men, so starting with just the baseline and then the line that goes up and so on, as different images in an image list. And each time they get a word wrong, increment that by one so it shows the next image in the array. Uh, there's a number of different projects that you could apply this to. You don't need a timer for all of them. Obviously with the hangman, you just want to increment the image when they guess a letter wrong uh, but you can use the concepts in this program uh, 
in order to create some of your other programs. Okay.